Okay. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. There you go. Um, hi, I'm Mary Abe. I work in the sustainability division under Don Hawkins Nixon. And uh, I'm actually a registered landscape architect. And what uh, Carol Barth and I, one of my team members, are going to talk about are green infrastructure and the practices and how that can potentially be a strategy for helping to reduce uh, runoff and also, uh, you know, ultimately uh, flooding issues as possible. Um, I think what's important to note about green infrastructure and in its essence, it's really about harnessing nature in order to take care of a problem such as stormwater management. And it's also a way to uh, combat what, what is inevitably coming and we're gonna find out I think tomorrow are heat related issues from climate change. Uh, so all of this is about a new way of how we handle stormwater management and possible solutions that you can consider on your property that are also aesthetically pleasing and also help manage water. So next uh, slide. On. So this is an example of a rain garden. Um, and it's while it's being, uh, while it's functioning, it's kind of a combination between a stormwater management uh, uh, garden where the water is flowing through and conveying, but it's still soaking up. And there are some parts of this garden uh, that actually have a way to actually absorb the water and sink it into the ground uh, in that particular location. Um, this is a situation in which if you, uh, everybody at their house, you know, for the most part, we all have walks and things like that. If you can see in the foreground, that brick that you're looking at is actually a permeable brick. So this is a combined solution of uh, what we would call green infrastructure uh, solutions that can be incorporated at a small scale, such as at a residence. This particular one is a, an old house. It's a historic house in, um, uh, that was owned by the Anacostia Watershed Society, but it's a residential uh, scale uh, sized lot where we implemented green infrastructure. And all the plants, those beautiful orange plants that you see, those are native plants that the butterflies like. And so the, the point of this slide is to show that this water can be handled infiltrated and it can still have a beauty to it that could be incorporated into your own house or a uh, resident or garden. Um, but uh, next slide, slide please. And this is another example of how you can use native plants and you're like, well, what does this have to do with runoff? These native plants, uh, when they are planted in uh, layers, uh, they can really help absorb uh, water. This particular example is an example, uh, if you, a lot of our homes in, in Prince George's County do back up into natural areas and it's this tenuousness, how do you transition from a lawn to a woodland that abuts your property? Well, this is an example of how you can do that and it can be very inviting. And what's beautiful about this type of scenario, most of the time when you live in a backyard where there is a lot of shade you might even have standing water. The grass just isn't going to grow. And so when you start to head towards what I would call a naturalization concept where you're using native plants, not only does it absorb water, but it can really be a great way of transitioning to what a lot of people will call like a wild space that they don't know what to do with. So this is an example of that. Um, next slide. And this is conservation landscaping. And this is another uh, situation where uh, this particular one is actually a rain garden and conservation landscaping. And again, that's the practice of removing lawn and replacing it with something that's a native cover. And what this does is this not only brings habitat for our pollinators and birds and things like butterflies, all of that, it's also a great way to absorb runoff from your home. So if you have a problem where you have standing water and you just don't know what to do with, maybe your house isn't flooding, but you can't use your backyard because everything is just always wet. This is a solution that you can do that you can regrade things. You can send the water, sheet drain it towards this type of landscape and it's beautiful and it really is low maintenance. And then the rest of your yard could maybe be a little bit drier where you could actually enjoy some lawn or some gathering space. Now, why we're bringing this up is, is that 
that through the county's rain check rebate uh, program, the slides, this slide and the slides before are all things that the county will actually pay for um, if you choose to do this. Uh, we have a whole system, it's called the rain check rebate system. And each residence can be up to $6,000 of lifetime limit where you basically, once you get approved to do these practices, the county will reimburse you for it. So it's kind of a win-win. Not only are you doing something that's really could potentially make your house look great, you're actually taking care of maybe some nuisance problems like uh, standing water or a, a situation where water needs to be absorbed from your house. You're trying to, to make your house better and you're keeping that water, you're infiltrating it into the ground rather than trying to get it to the street uh, to, to drain down uh, to the storm drain system. So uh, next, uh, next slide, please. So all of those different practices, the county recognizes that um, we're a very residential uh, community where, in other words, we have a lot of houses. And so consequently, when you look at a problem, uh, a street or something where the water is backing up and it's, there's, there's nuisance flooding or there's some kind of flooding issues, much of that water in our urban areas, not so much in the suburban areas, but in our urban areas, I live in Mount Rainier um, and we our houses, like my front yard is only 50 feet wide. Most of the water that goes down to the street that the houses are sheeting off from the roofs, from their sidewalks, probably about 60% of it goes to the right of way and goes to the storm drain system. And it's actually the root of a lot of the problems with our storm drain system being overwhelmed. In other words, you might think it's the street and the sidewalk in an urban scenario like this, but when you start to have really dense development, such as in a place like Mount Rainier, Bladensburg, the vast majority of that water is probably coming from the driveway, the walk, the roof, the lawn. And so what this Blitz program is about, it's about finding a way to go into a community and get everybody in that community as much as possible to install these practices, these rain check rebate practices, because those practices that I showed you before help reduce the amount of runoff that goes down to the street and then goes into the storm drain system and ultimately causes flooding somewhere. So this is a new, this is a community uh, blitz that we're doing. It's a new pilot approach. And the beauty of this is, is that the county is paying for the practices for free. The way the rain check rebate currently works is, is if a homeowner uh, wants to put these practices in, they have to get approved by our partner, Chesapeake Bay Trust. Then they go and they find a contractor and the contractor will give them a contract. They'll pay for it up front and then they'll install it. Then you get the invoice and it goes back to the Chesapeake Bay Trust and to the county. And then we cut you a check. Well, I personally don't have $6,000 up front to pay for a lot of things. And so this is our way of piloting to see if we can't get more of these practices in the ground, if the county put them in for folks, will we get greater participation? And thus far with this particular blitz, we're finding out we have a tremendous amount of interest and a lot of people want to participate. And you're like, well, why would that matter? Well, ultimately, if we can get enough people to put these practices in on their own private property, a really large project that might involve a storm drain system upgrade uh, could become less expensive to put in because the volume, the storm water that's going into that system is actually reduced. And so what it does is it allows the county to have a little bit more of a lifespan on a system that may need to be increased due to climate change because folks, climate change is real and it's happening. And for our area, what we're gonna get is a lot more rain. Um, and then drought, and then rain, and then drought, and then high temperatures. So next slide. And this is kind of its sister uh, project uh, that's in kind of a different lay of the land. The one that's in Brentwood is similar to like a Mount Rainier where the houses are really close together. It's a truly urban scenario. But the one in Tantalan is another scenario that's outside the Beltway where they have really big uh, problems with their drainage. And these are more of your typical subdivision layout. And so the solutions there are a little bit different, but we're taking the same approach to work with folks in that neighborhood to install practices on their property with the purpose of either taking care of their own drainage problem on their house 
rather than sending it to the street or uh, just simply to, to help them with nuisance flooding on their own property. So next slide, Carol, you're next. Thank you, Mary. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about trees. Um, I'm not gonna read this slide to you, but I hope you will look at it because it hopefully will convince you that planting trees are one of the most impactful things that you can do. I mean, think about it. If I had invented a product that could do all of this, I would be a gazillionaire. Um, but because this comes from mother nature, we, we tend to overlook it and not maybe think about everything that the trees can be doing for us in addition to helping manage water and reduce flooding issues. Next slide, please. So as Mary mentioned, we have the rain check rebate program and another practice that you can do under that is to, um, plant trees and receive money for that. And I just saw the question come through the chat from my last slide and it's one of my favorite questions. Uh, the, the question was how do trees reduce crime? And there's actually been a lot of fascinating research on this and it turns out that neighborhoods with large mature trees, when a criminal looks at that, they realize two things. People care about their neighborhood and people are outside taking care of their neighborhood. So that makes it not an ideal target. If you've heard of like the broken window syndrome where a neighborhood is, is suffering and run down, it's more vulnerable to crime, this is the opposite. And there are also studies showing that levels of stress and violence are reduced when we have trees and a view of trees. So yeah, um, don't get me going, I can go on trees all day. But anyway, I urge you like Mary did to look at the rain check rebate and see if this is something that you can do. Um, you know, there's help available to help you figure out what would work best on your property. Next slide. Okay, so, um, you know, as Mary already mentioned, if you have a wet yard, the lawn is not going to be happy. Now here are just four examples of trees that will thrive in a wet yard. They will be happy and they will help to soak up a good deal of that water. Uh, these are all native trees. Um, they're tough, they're easy to grow. And let me tell you, this is a beautiful looking yard if you get these trees. You have the really magnificent stately sycamore, you have the delicate river birch, both of those in the winter time have multicolored peeling bark, so it gives you winter interest. When the sycamores are mature, they have this beautiful shining silver white bark. The sweet bay magnolia, the fringe tree, these are smaller, what we call understory trees. Both of these trees have magnificently fragrant flowers in the spring. Um, the, the fringe tree is a delicate kind of sweet and spicy smell. The sweet bay magnolia to me at least smells both sweet and lemony at the same time. Now, if you were to add a couple of red maples or a couple of sweet gums to this for intense, beautiful fall color, you're on your way to a show-stopping yard and you're on the way to reducing your maintenance burden because you're not fighting against the conditions trying to get lawn to grow. You've brought in plants that like what you have instead of trying to change what you have to grow lawn. So, um, you know, it can be our secret. You don't have to tell your neighbors that it has eased your maintenance burden. Just say, well, look what I've done and how awesome it is. Okay, next slide. Now, we are in a situation where many areas of the county severely lack trees. Um, you know, my slide about some of the benefits for the reverse is if you don't have the trees, then you suffer problems. Neighborhoods with fewer trees, for example, have much higher rates of childhood asthma. As our climate is warming, there's gonna be a lot more heat stroke, heat-related illnesses, um, stroke, heart attacks, all of that. So we are also working with our municipalities and our HOAs to try and rectify that. And what we're really striving to do 
is to do large scale plantings uh, in public areas that can impact uh, a neighborhood or a block or hopefully even a community over time. So uh, particularly in our inner beltway communities where there are a few trees and a whole lot of paving, um, these cooling grows and cooling parks uh, will, as they grow, create a whole new cycle of air that brings cooling breezes out to the surrounding community. Um, trees are wonderful for providing shade, but they also provide active cooling. They take energy out of the air as they transpire water up through their leaves, and that sets up a nice circulation. So you can see the before, this was a nice little park area. It had mature trees, it had a rain garden, but now we have just peppered it with trees. We planted over a hundred trees in this particular um, cooling park. It's the first cooling park in the county, so we're pretty excited about that. But I will also point out that this site has an intermittent stream. And so all of this, again, is gonna help with that water management. That's the thing, the trees are the multitaskers. Next slide. And here is our more suburban example with an HOA. HOAs often have a lot of common area and much of that is in lawn and it's a very expensive burden that the residents have to pay for to keep that mode at all times. Um, again, we're looking to build in the benefits of the tree. So you can see here, you know, there are reasons to have grass, but a lot of the times the grass in our communities is there because it was cheap for the developer to put in. And then you have the lifetime of maintenance. The trees are gonna provide all these functions and as an extra co-benefit, beauty. So we hear in, this is a, a, an HOA, um, Barnaby Valley Park, and they had, again, areas with a lot of wetness and just people can't use those parts of their yards or of their uh, HOA property. So again, these trees are really gonna help a lot with that as well as providing these other benefits. Next slide. And we're on to residential drainage. Thank you, Carol. Um, our next speaker is Moses Fatteron, uh, who represents our engineering services section and leads our drainage investigations team. Moses. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So we have... Um, actually a whole section that is dedicated to investigating drainage concern in the county. And uh, we take uh, concern from citizens and residents across Prince George's County. Uh, next slide. So we can see a typical home, a property, and we can see how the house is located, how the terrain is, how the water is supposed to flow away from the home foundation. And we can see the application of, of what Mary and uh, just talked about. Uh, you can see the uh, right in front and the left, left front is what look like a rain garden. And we'll see uh, at the left rear, we see the rain barrel. So, um, and a little bit of landscaping at the front of the house. So we kind of see the application of the, um, you know, soft, soft engineering approach that uh, was discussed earlier. And then we look at the uh, dance spout. See somebody, the dance spout is supposed to kick the water away from the foundation. A well-built home will have water running away from the home foundation. Next slide. So we have uh, developed 
uh, common drainage problems. Actually, we develop a uh, drainage uh, residential drainage manual that uh, will be available on our website. It's almost completed. And uh, all the citizens and residents of uh, Prince George's County will have uh, access to it. We develop it so that it can help you as citizens and residents, some of to know, get knowledge of the common problem that you may experience on your property as the property uh, get older and as you do improvement, improvement on your property. So some of those common problems when you experience them, you will have knowledge of how to handle them. Uh, most of those uh, common drainage problem include basement flooding, you know? So if my bas basement is flooding, why is my basement flooding? So if you look uh, section 231, uh, will help you to uh, know why, you know, causes of basement flooding and uh, see which one best fits your own situation. Uh, safety water leaking through the walls, dampy or moldy walls, water entering basement, and then you go into yard and drainage system problem. Some pump not working properly, or continuously running. Um, so we have section there that will tell you what are the reasons why your sump pump may be continuously running are not working properly, maybe because we have increased uh, rainfall and that increased the uh, elevation of the groundwater table. And then that push, pushes more water higher up for your sump pump to work. And it could be a defective sump pump. Um, area where drain clog, it could be uh, if you drain clog, if you have a basement that it doesn't have a walkout, it's in the ground. If that area is, is clogged, that will allow water to get underneath your door and flood your basement. Water backing up through pipe, septic system problems. You know, section seven will give you an idea. And uh, you know, yard, saggy and standing water, sinkhole in yard, BS spot in yard, what you can do. Maybe you have a lot of uh, uh, trees in the yard and the uh, some area in the yard is not getting enough sun. Appendix C will tell you uh, the type of uh, seed, grass seed that you should use that will help you help the grass grow under uh, non-sunny condition. And uh, stream overflow into your property, stream bank eroding away. So, we developed this uh, residential drainage manual with the citizens and residents in mind. And uh, we believe that once we make it available on our website, it will benefit everybody. And when you still can't figure things out, uh, you can always call PGC 311 to uh, get one of the county inspector to come out and help out. Next slide. I think you jump one slide. You get, yep. Yard flooding. So uh, people buy their home and particularly who are the uh, first they are the original home buyer. The house is built for them. And um, two years, three years, if you live in a subdivision and you want to first want to buy your house, you and your neighbor, you have no, no pro water problem. Uh, maybe one year, two years, three years. And then suddenly you started having water problem. And uh, that could be because some of these things, if you, we look at those arrow in between two properties, there's always what we call like a swale that's supposed to collect water runoff from property on the left side 
what I run off from property on the right side and run it towards the street or run it towards um, a storm drainage inlet structure. But over time, people, you know, property owners do stuff on their property. Um, some people will put shed on where the water, we call it the drainage pathway, where the water is supposed to flow. Now that they deliberately do it, but because they don't know, some people will put uh, a shed, they will put a, um, a deck. The deck uh, footing, uh, column footing could be inside the, the drainage swale, which we call the drainage pathway. And before you know it, you have water backing up or water not flowing uh, as it wasn't originally intended to flow. So we recommend that uh, when you buy your house, kind of look at the how the drainage, look at the terrain, how the, the water is supposed to flow, especially when you're planning to put a shed or you're planning to uh, build a deck. Pay special attention to how the water flow when, when it rains. So that uh, if you look at the photo then, you see the, the house, see how the water is supposed to flow away, away from each house. And you see how it come down to what we call the swale. And that's where we collect the water uh, towards the street. But if that swale is impacted by anything, even sometimes a little bit of uh, somebody putting some excavated material in, inside it could, uh, could impact the flow of water. Uh, next slide. Okay, so this is an example of a drainage complaint that uh, developed into County actually coming out to do a funded project. So we have two conditions that will qualify a drainage complaint for a, a funded project like this. Um, if somebody, if you and your neighbor are experiencing constant flooding, uh, you, you, you're getting constant flooding in your basement, in your the property that you live in, not the shed, and not the uh, garage, detached garage. Um, when you complain, we will come and investigate. And if we, our investigation confirm that yes, the cause of your constant flooding is because of uh, excessive water, then the county will recommend a project that will now cost you a dime. All it will cost you and your other affected property owners will be your cooperation with the county. And uh, the most significant part of the co cooperation is your agreeing to grant the county the easement, the easement to build the storm drainage, and then the easement to come in the future if something happens to the system for the county to maintain it. Um, I said that we do further investigation uh, if you're having constant flooding because uh, we have so many residents that have complained of constant flooding, but the reason for their flooding is not related to excessive water. It could be um, down spout that is just not being kicked out like the, uh, the photo that was shown previously, uh, the water running against the foundation and going to the basement. It could be a, a clogged drain um, that is forcing water into the basement. So that's why when you complain, um, we go back and do further studies and ask you questions. And if you, uh, and, uh, if you have, your flooding is now related to excessive um, surface water runoff, then we will give you technical advice how to make uh, appropriate corrections so that you uh, stop having uh, flooding in your basement. Um, the other condition is 
if you complain that there's too much water running through your yard, and we also investigate and determine that yes, there's too much water. There is a, a benchmark of how much water should run uh, through a property. So if we perform further investigation and determine that the amount of water running through your yard is more than the maximum that should be running through your yard, even if you're not getting your basement flooded, uh, the county will still recommend the project uh, so that uh, the um, amount of water running through your yard will meet the county standard. So those are the uh, two conditions that will warrant a project um, from a drainage complaint. Um, next slide. So these are the common mistakes that we observed over the years that are made by homeowners um, in their effort to improve their property. And sometimes uh, the intent is to improve it, but actually cause problems. So we can see from the uh, upper left, we see somebody installing a, a fence, a wooden fence. Uh, maybe for whatever reason, for privacy, they will see the wrong way of installing it, especially on uh, drainage, drainage part. I mentioned earlier on that I recommend that every property owner should know, they should look at the terrain of their property so that they know how the water flow. When it rains, how does the water flow? Where is the water? Usually water will flow from one side and from another side and then concentrate in one place to be directed to towards the road or towards the structure. So this level, oh, go ahead, Mo. We lost you for a minute. Continue. Oh, you lost go ahead. You can continue. Okay. So um what I was saying was the same thing that I said earlier that every property owner should spend time to look at their yard, understand how the terrain of their yard works. Hmm. Look like there's some problem. Can you guys hear me? I can't see anything anymore. Hmm. Hello? We can hear you. We lost power temporarily in the office. Lalantha, you need to re-share uh, your screen. Yes. I am sharing my screen as we speak. Um, Can you see that? Uh, yes, it's back. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. No okay, so we see on the top the fencing that is how the fence is in installed all the way to the ground. So when it rain, that will block the water uh, runoff from running through the part that it should be running through and then it will cause the water to back up uh, behind the fence. What that does is it cause the uh, property above that to have water effect. And also it shortens the life of the fence itself because it will make the vicinity of the fence wet all the time. And that will rot in the wood, Very even though they treated wood, um, but if even treated wood when they, they're constantly in water, uh, it shortens their lifespan. So if you look under, the correct way is the way it is installed. We have a clearance at the bottom of the fence, uh, a four inch to six inch clearance. That is particularly uh, required, especially on the drainage part. And that's why I mentioned earlier on that you, uh, when you, before installing your fence, Look at the terrain of your property, see how the water runs, so that you know exactly where you need to, you must provide that four to six inch clearance 
so that the water will be able to pass. And we look at uh, another example is uh, um, window wells. We see the wrong way and we see the right way. Um, the um, number one condition for a window well is that the water must drain away from the well. And then there must be enough clearance between the ground and the top of the well. And when the top of the uh, window well is now covered on top, it is uh, recommended to put a top. You could see the plastic top. Uh, there are some new subdivision that they actually put a drain inside the, uh, inside the well. But if yours is not like that, then you should put a, a cover so that water will not be getting in. You see the wrong way, see how um, the dot is so close to the top of the uh, window well. And also there's like an erosion because of lack of positive drain, drainage away from the well. Then the other example is the dance spout. Uh, we see the wrong way of putting the dance spout. We look at the wrong way, see the, the uh, long-term effect. See the dance spout with no extension and no backsplash. We see how the water is running against the foundation and over the period of time it's caused um, damage and eroded between uh, the foundation wall and the, the uh, concrete in front of it. And that's a, a good way of uh, getting water into the basement. Um, and we see the correct way of doing it on the right side with the extension. And even with the extension, it's got a, a bass splash on top of it. The bass splash um, help to reduce the force of the water coming from the roof. I don't know how many people have been out to, to look especially when we have the heavy downpour. If you see the amount of water coming from your dance part, it's like boom, boom, boom. So when you hit the, the, the backsplash, we could, could be concrete, it could be plastic. When you hit it, it slows down, the, uh, it reduces the energy. And that help uh, to uh, reduce um, erosive, erosive effect of uh, water from your um, dance spout. And it also keep, you can see how it's so far away from the foundation to prevent the water from getting through your foundation into your basement. Um, next. Well, we, uh, like I said earlier on, we developed the residential drainage manual uh, with the citizens and the residents in mind. Um, we wanted to call PGC 311 for all your complaints. And um, the number one reason for that is to bring the citizens closer to the county, county government, uh, the county agencies. We have different agencies that deal with different issues. So, and the uh, PGC 311 was developed with questions that when you call the center with the question that you they ask you or whether you uh, file online, the question, the question will be able to direct to the right agency that will address your concern instead of you being routed from A to B to C that will prolong uh, the time that you will get relief for your consent. So it is important that uh, you call PGC 311. It also help us track your complaint. And also um, you could, they will give you a service request number. So even if it's one year from now, two years from now, if you keep that service request number, you call us back and give us the service request number, we'll be able to track and follow up what was done and what still need to be done. Um, next slide. I, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's it from me. All right, thank you, Moses. So in this part of our presentation, we're going to review capital projects. These are the type of projects that the county government will fund 
and undertake for purposes of addressing um, large scale flooding issues. Uh, Moses talked a little bit about what some of those uh, capital projects could look like, but I want to share with you examples of other capital projects which have been um, implemented in the county. Next slide, please. So many of us see um, in our communities, these ponds, they look like community ponds. They look like um, recreational ponds. It could be a bike trail around, it could be a walk path around it. But many times these large ponds that you will see in the upper, my upper left-hand corner are actual regional detention facilities. Um, they are meant to capture and retain, detain a certain amount of stormwater runoff during major storm events. So this particular uh, uh, aerial photo that you see in the upper, um, my left-hand corner of the screen is the Lake Arbor uh, Regional Facility that's located here in Upper Marlboro, or some might call it Mitchellville. And we have quite a few of these regional facilities throughout the county, but again, they are intended to provide flood control. Uh, we also have what we call levee systems or berms built in the county for flood control purposes. Our largest uh, flood control levee system is in the Anacostia River, uh, Anacostia River watershed. These are the Bladensburg levee system, Colmar Manor levee system, uh, I believe it's Edmiston, Riverdale, Brentwood levee system. These systems, again, are intended to create a, um, a barrier between the river, Anacostia River, Anacostia River tributary, and the communities which are landward of the levee. Essentially, the levees are built high enough to uh, protect these communities from the flood levels along the river. Now, there might be residual flooding behind the levee because, of course, we know that water will, the rain will um, fall on the landward side of the levee and water will flow to the levee. So for many levee systems, there are pumping stations in place to pump out that water on the landward side into the river. As I move down to the second row on uh, my, my left-hand side, you'll see an aerial photo of a community in Brentwood, I believe. This is an example of a levee, I'm sorry, a flood wall. Uh, Lamantha, if you could trace the flood wall. Yes, a flood wall uh, was constructed along the Arundel Canal, or some people call it the Allison Street Canal, uh, to protect those communities landward of that canal from uh, riverine flooding along the, the concrete channel structure. Moving on to my right, many times we will experience flooding or communities will experience flooding at roadway crossings due to the fact that perhaps the culvert at the road or if it's a bridge crossing is too small. When we find um, that those situations are occurring, our county government, be it Department of Public Works and Transportation or um, if it's a new development, maybe we incorporate some mitigation to existing uh, infrastructure into the new development plans, we will expand or increase the capacity of a roadway crossing by maybe adding an additional culvert, perhaps by expanding the uh, bridge uh, opening. If we move, as we move down to that last row uh, where we have a a road crossing, oops, I'm sorry, Lena. Yeah, the road crossing. This is an example of a, a bridge enlargement in Baton, Maryland, uh, where the uh, older structure was undersized. 
So our Department of Public Works and Transportation undertook a project to open up that water uh, conveyance area, that area where the water can flow through in order to alleviate ponding behind the, um, behind the, the bridge and ponding that would essentially impact residential properties via flooding um, on that upstream side. And the last photo is a uh, example of a green infrastructure project. Um, I, I can't remember what Mary told me. Nature-based solution. Okay, nature-based solution at work um, along with um, some remnants of a traditional gray infrastructure project to improve the uh, Calvert Street channel, uh, which was previously an all concrete channel. Uh, the Department of Public Works undertook a project to green that channel. Um, it was considered a capital project due to the size of it, the funding associated with it, and the um, the fact that it it was a uh, it's, a, it's a big complex project that impacts uh, an entire community or I should say communities. So uh, the intent of this uh, slide is just to show you that there are multiple ways in which the county approaches uh, flood reduction flood reduction through green infrastructure projects, through these gray infrastructure projects, and even um, through some of the smaller um, do-it-yourself type of activities that uh, residents can do, be it through uh, the residential drainage improvement or planting a tree or installing a rain garden. Next slide. So our team, uh, the sustainability division is currently working on several watershed level flood hazard assessments and mitigation studies. We recognize that many of the watershed level studies were done back in the 1980s and 1990s, um, and they're pretty much outdated with respect to the uh, assessment of our rainfall amounts, the assessment of what our current uh, land use is, what our current zoning uh, proposed, right? 40, 30 years ago, we weren't thinking a lot about climate change, not with the same focus and concern that we are thinking about now. So these new watershed studies for Piscataway Creek, Western Branch, Oxford Run, His Creek, Gopher Run, Wells Run, takes into consideration how much water are we anticipating to fall from the sky? Where is that water going based on existing development conditions and proposed development conditions? Um, where are we going to put the water? And to what extent uh, do we anticipate that properties will be impacted, developed properties will be impacted by flooding, uh, be it uh, the the runoff flooding associated with flash floods or tidal flooding or riverine flooding, the water actually um, runoff filling up our stream banks and flowing over over into uh, the overbank areas where uh, much development has already occurred. So I'd like to um, invite all on this call and if you have uh, neighbors who are not on the call, if you have a flooding issue, if your community has experienced repeated flooding in a certain part of your community, certain homes have experienced flooding in these particular watersheds, and I understand not everyone will understand what watershed they're in, but if you know of any uh, incidents in your community where there's that repeated repetitive flooding occurring, we'd like to know. And at the end of the slide, we'll give you information as to where you can um, uh, submit that information for our consideration and understanding um, as we move forward to develop some 
mitigation measures to address flooding uh, in the county. Next slide, please. So you heard a lot about um, the 311 for Moses. I'm not going to go into detail about that, but I do want to draw your attention to the last bullet in this slide where it says connect with us via email at doecares at co.pg.md.us. This is where you want to submit to us information about repetitive flooding in your community so that we may take that information and follow up with you uh, to inform how we direct the watershed studies and the uh, particular potential areas that will be candidates for consideration of uh, conceptual level flood mitigation measures. So with that, I think we're wrapping up our presentation. Next slide. And we invite um, you all on the call to share with us any questions or comments that you might have. Feel free to come off your mic to ask your questions or-, or On, we had a request uh, for a copy of the slides. Yes, we can provide a copy of those slides. Um, if you make that request in DOE Cares, or maybe we can upload it to our webpage, um, We'll, we'll we'll share the slides with you. So if you'd like to have a copy of the slides directly, just uh, shoot us the request via doecares at co.pg.md.us. Do we have any other questions? Wow, that's easy. Trying to think here. Um, should we and, not? And the chat? Yeah, I don't think there are any in the chat. So we have about four minutes remaining. Um, if I could share with you some of the communities, towns, cities within those watersheds that will help you to understand where our studies are focused. And hopefully um, you might be in one of those watersheds. So that will give you an opportunity to uh, uh, email us and let us know what your request is. Okay, MT, I see you have a question. You sent an email about the pool week you discussed last week. Where did you send your email request via DOE Cares? You can come off the mic, MT. I just put in the chat where I sent it. I got no reply. That was almost a week ago. I okay. sent this probably six days ago. Where is the? All right. June six. I sent it. Okay. I think we must have been checking with Paul. I'll, I'll check into that for you, MT, and follow up with you. Is, is that the correct email that I sent it to? Did you send it to DOE Cares? Yeah, he has the right email address. DOE, the last uh, message, DOE Cares at co.pg.md. Okay, let yeah. me check with the DOE Cares recipient, make sure they send it my way. And I'd also asked about slides last week, but nobody that did not happen yeah and for doe so, cares it's no. all in that doe's doe cares request i'll get it to you no he um oh. we will be putting the slides on our website right don um yeah and are you going to send oh. us a link to that because the website has five hundred and thirty four thousand links <laughs> oh, okay. Hold no. on. Let me get let me get you. The it's on your website is like saying there's a needle. It's in this hay haystack. Go go find it. Yeah, it's somewhere. There's a lot. Is what I'm saying. Back <laughs> Can you go back up, Lalantha? Let me see where that info is. Um, go back up. Um, on slide. On the slide. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that our web page, right? 
All right, let me get you the... And, and honestly, when you have a slide with the DOE CARES, this happened last week, I had to write that down because you can't grab that link from a slide on a Zoom unless it's in the chat. So yeah, maybe we need to all the email that. should also be in the chats that you're talking about. So it's much easier to get to as opposed to, oh, let me get a piece of paper. Hopefully it'll be on the screen long enough and I can write this down. You know, all right, just... we'll convert that to a QR code. That'll make it better next uh, week, I guess. Yeah. See if I can convert it to a QR code. I, I apologize for my slow grandma typing as well, getting things entered into the chat. Yeah, well, no problem. That's not, a, that's not a problem. So, MT, you had a question about planting. Planting supported by PGC. Yes, I. Uh, if 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 that is possible, I would love to have more plants around my house the um the big issue is the 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 water runoff from the pool that is uphill directly behind my property and my neighbor we both have water oozing into our property and uh it's kind of annoying it just constantly runs down my driveway and kind of puddles off to the side where i don't walk or anything but Mm -hmm. <laughs> that should be fixed. That's a, I think that's a 311 complaint. So, Moses, would we <laughs> put that into 311? There's a discharge from a pond, I'm sorry, a pool that's impacting the resident's property. Do we yeah, they, that 311? Yeah, he can call 311. But, I mean, if they come out, um, they just going to look at the uh, discharge for the swimming pool. Swimming pool is only drained, I don't know, a uh, few times in summer. But this is a large community oh. swimming pool. No, the community pool that, <laughs> yeah, it, at least okay. almost okay. all the time. Um, yeah. Put it that will go to DPI. So well, you, I, you can call. You, you I, can call I did. One. I did do that last week. I emailed DOE Cares and I said I took the Zoom session with Lilantha, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I live downhill from a pool and, it, you know, I'm wondering. Oh, you, you sent but, that to us in DOE Cares, but not in 311. I got Yes, it. I sent that to DOE Cares. And did you, did yeah. you provide your telephone information? And I provide. All of that. Uh, I gave them my address. And right. not my phone number, but yeah. Okay. But I didn't so, get a reply that says, hey, we need more information from you or this is what you should do. That was six days ago. Yeah, it's it's with our DO, DOE peers uh, group. So I will email them now and request that information. Uh, yeah, but, but done. In regard to the concern for the uh, pool discharge, mm -hmm. That actually need to call this. He need to call three one one because my department cannot address that. Another department will address that. Okay. And the so call three one one and ask for what? Just tell them I want somebody so to come in. And when you when you call three one one, you uh, your complaint will be uh, discharge from community swimming pool, uh, causing water uh, ponding on your property. Okay. And what should I ask for? What department? No, no, you don't need to ask. That means that if you, if you uh, call them, uh, automatically, that's why we developed the, uh, the uh, uh, PGC 311 so that they know how to direct your concern. I mean, sometimes there's some gray area, you know, but most of the time they will get it right. That, that, is, that is deep high concern. That's an enforcement, enforcement. So I guess what he's trying to say, MT, is that you can call 311 and tell them you have a service request for an investigation of a pool. Investigation yes. of a water, water leak or whatever. Right, water. right. A okay. leak from a community pool impacting your property. Okay. 
And, and I believe that it's, um, this is Carol again, when you, if you do it uh, online, instead of speaking to an agent, you'll see that there's different categories yeah. and you want to be sure that you've got a category that's talking about a problem coming from another property of yours. That's the little clue that tells them to send it to enforcement. Okay. Yeah. Can, you put, can you put that link for that website Hello. in the chat? Um, Hi, this is Lilantha. Um, you can either uh, uh, download the PGC311 mobile app. The web portal, just if you go to um, Google and put PGC311, you will uh, come onto the page. I'll see if I can find it. Right I'm, I'm going there now. Okay. That's the easiest I have found. I think there might, there's uh, probably many ways to get to it. But PGC311 on a web browser will get you there. And yeah, something like water intrusion uh, from another property um, so that they know how to route it. Is it PGC 311? Actually, I'd like to ask you, have you ever talked to the community, you and your neighbor to express your concern? Yes. And, and they haven't done anything? They have said things, but the water still leaks. <clears throat> and then the next question, is there anything practical in your own view? Is there anything practical you think could be done? Is there anything what? Practical, because if the inspector come out and look, and there's no other way they could discharge the water, they're still gonna say, well, um, um, there's none of they have to discharge the water. But if there is a, a maybe another location they could discharge the water, if there's something that they could do maybe to alleviate the condition. Um the, 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 no. yeah. I'm just saying the pool was built over 60 years ago and the houses weren't here and the cul-de-sac, and they have uh pipes that go to our street i guess to to drain things and i think those pipes are clogged and leaking and so they just come up through the earth now as opposed to actually get to a place where they could flow outside of our properties both me and my next door neighbor. my next door neighbor has it worse than i do i don't know why but i've got one particular it's like it's like a, an oil well like this little one foot square patch where this water leaks it's it's literally like <laughs> my my lawn has sprung oil but it's the pool got to be the pool because it stops when the pool doesn't work when the pool's not operating there's no water when the pool starts operating there's water so, you know, when I contact the pool, they're like, are you sure it's not an underground spring or the rain? It rained a lot. I'm like, it only happens when you have the pool. <laughs> and this has been going on for years. So, yeah. And you're sure it's not oil, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, it, it warrants an investigation by DPI. Yeah, and sorry about the DOE cares because that um, we usually get notified when you send an email to DOE cares, but in this case, neither don't know I got that notification but um yeah pgc311 is is the official um complaint uh platform so and, that and i put the link to the online portal in the chat mt this is mary um just from a perspective of the the pool um if an, a way to maybe prove it's coming from the pool is to get a water sampling and high chlorine uh, rate because the pool have, probably does have a high chlorination rate um, as opposed to something that's just uh, draining uh, does, something. Does the, does the county have that? No, we do not have that. Um, well, yeah. we have water testing services. Moses team can test the runoff. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. And, yeah, and, but and my, my program is not for something like that. But uh, I my just say my concern is that uh, because it is going through Mother Earth, 
that it might not be too chlorinated by the time it gets mm -hmm. to my driveway. You know, it's, I oh. think it's seeping through the ground I, from some leak 30, 40, 50, 100 feet away. I don't think it goes that much through Mother Earth for the chlorine to be um, diluted or removed. But I think um, what you said, the clues you gave, suggest to me it's the pool. If it if it's only a summertime uh, thing, that most likely means it's pool. But I think I I, I would hazard the guess that a inspector should be able to relatively quickly. So let let's yeah. deter, let's say that the, the inspector says yes, it's the pool. Then what? So yeah. if the inspector says the pool. Uh, it's important for you to, of course, you'll be there when the inspector come. Then you can, uh, you live, I don't know how long you live in your house and uh, on your property. Have you observed deterioration of the condition uh, in, the, in the so many years? So like you mentioned earlier, maybe the pipe is, is uh, damaged somewhere. And if that is the case, then you can, you can enforce them to repair the pipe. So what can enforce them? To repair. Depend, repair the pipe. Pipe. Enforcement will enforce them to, to repair the pipe. To eliminate the leak. Who is, what's, in, what's enforcement? What does that mean? That is our Department of Permitting Inspections and Enforcement Agency. Yeah, okay. they have inspectors with code enforcement authority. Okay. And to add a snafu to the this, they may be in Montgomery County because one block over for me is mm -hmm. Montgomery yeah. County. Yeah, so they would coordinate with the depart with the appropriate department in Montgomery County to advise okay. their findings. Okay. All right. Um, we had a question also from Patrick Duran. Patrick, uh, would you like to come off line off mute? You indicated that you had a question about fence enclosures around a pond? Um, yes. This has been an issue. Um, I used to live in Howard County and I moved to PG. I hear you very well. Can oh, you, could you speak up? Can you hear me? Yes. Better now. Okay, hold on. Let me put on my uh, microphone here, see if that can be Better, that can be better. Hold on, give me one second. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. So I moved from uh, Howard County to move, uh, to PG County, and then uh, the house that I get has a a pound in the back, not really in the back, but on the side. And when it's a really, really pouring, when it's really, we have a heavy rain, we all look at the windows because we worry about the water just gonna just get into our house. Now, that's the first issue where, you know, by God's grace, it never happens. And then, you know, when it stops, it just drains and then dries off. It, the pond is clean uh, 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 around, but inside, it, it needs some work done. So I went to my community. I talked to the homeowner association, everybody. So and then uh, I think I kind of put the complaint in one time, and a PG County sent inspector to come and look around everything. And then the first thing they told me, they said, "Well, this has been an issue with former uh, the previous owner of this house also kind of complained about that." And uh, the PG County kind of take ownership to put a fence around it because it's so close that even if my kid, they just throw a ball to each other, the ball kind of get into the pound. And then since I've been here twice, my kid already fall into that pond when it was very dirty. And then we have to keep them outside and spray them with the water properly before get them into the house to take a shower. I don't know who to turn to anymore because I talked to the homeowner association. They sent me to the PG County. PG County sent me to the homeowner association. I've been bounced between. And now, now that I'm here today, I just want to see if anybody has idea how I can talk about this or handle this. 
I don't have money to put a fence around that pound myself because it's not on my yard. Yeah, so I, I assume it's on community property. Yes, uh, it is on the community property. And then uh, the PG County trying to take care of that, uh, cut the grass around it, all those stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a the county maintained property. Uh, county maintained property. I'm not going to lie to that. They kind of maintain it properly. They okay. That's when they need it. So I, I, I hate to send you back to 311, but if the county is maintaining that pond, then that tells me that it's a county, um, it's under county jurisdiction. And I think what's critical uh, in your service request in 311 is that the pond is posing a hazard um, just by the fact that it's so accessible to residents, especially small children, that um, you have that need for some type of safety measure to be built in for that pond. Now, I don't know if fence is the correct safety measure because a fence will um, create some obstruction for the flow into the pond, but the request for a measure to provide an additional level of safety should be stressed in that 311 request. And um, it will be directed to the Department of Public Works and Transportation. Uh, Mary, I saw you come off mute. Are you there, Mary? I'm sorry, Don. Can you repeat that? I said I I saw you come off mute. Did you have a comment about the um, pond? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. It. All right. Yeah. So I I think Mr. Duran, that that is your um, approach to take to advise of that that hazard that you're concerned with. I w I will try to go back to that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, when I say go back, is because I uh, I have addressed this issue for three one one. That how they register. I believe if somebody have a record to go and check the complaint, they will see that. That how they register my complaint and send uh, some people. I believe the inspector, uh, you know, over uh, several of them. And some of them, are, I think, they are high profile in management because I have a chance to be at home and spoke to them at that time. Uh, but there was no result. This has been like almost a year passes now. I'm still here. Uh, it's kind of difficult to do anything on my yard uh, on the summertime, except to just sit around, you know, and because the kid cannot play. Not, that's no way. Mm -hmm. There's no way you, you can do anything. They just go into the pound, straight into the yeah. pound. Yeah, well, I think if you have that 311 request, it's, it's fine. It could be um, that they are, I hate to say they're still working on the request and, and over a year, but there should have been some type of update if you have not received a response, then um, I, I I would recommend that you request uh, status on that three one one request that you made earlier. Well, yeah, not to uh, hold everybody. To, yeah, go ahead. So I'm sorry. Yeah, this is Moses. So uh, I will recommend just like Don said, uh, call three one one and then make reference to the previous service request that you had that. Uh, was not at least properly addressed by you and the you know expressing the, that the concerns still remain and so that whoever come in and when they come out try to be there so that you can show them your concern because inspector come in and look around and see don't see any problem and then they just walk away so that would be my recommendation call 311 again reference the previous three uh, service request number that you had, that somebody came, but your concern was not addressed. Yeah, and thank you. I will, I will try to do that again. It just, uh, just a little bit frustrated that uh, 311 call with uh, people that send over, their response was to talk to the homeowner association. I talked to the homeowner association and then they say, well, um, PG County, has agreed to do that. And then suddenly so they turn back to them and they have money to do it. And then uh, they were waiting so long and the money has sponged. 
it's kind of just too much talking. Um, maybe I need to revive this case to see where it's gonna land at this time. Because what's come to us that I can't do nothing, um, I'm just gonna have to, <laughs> to do what needed, what it need necessary for me. Um, that's all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Do we have? Um, I think we're ran a little bit over time, but are there any burning questions that we have not addressed? Um, and we will proceed with uploading um, this presentation and session one presentation to our website uh, following this meeting. Oh. So with that, next slide, Lamantha, real quick, we do have um, a session three and four coming up um, next week, Thursday, June 20th. Our partner from the Maryland Insurance Administration will uh, present on flood insurance. Session three, I'm sorry, session four will be held Thursday, June 27th. And our partners from the office, Prince George's County Office of Homeland Security will present on disaster response and recovery when a flood does occur. So we hope that um, you will join us for those uh, sessions three and four. And also, uh, before I forget, this evening, we will have a uh, second presentation for session two. So we will be doing this same presentation again at 6 p.m. Uh, this evening for those who might not have been available to join us for the 12 o'clock session today. So with that, I do appreciate um, your participation and your comments.